trend is changing. And times are changing, but very, very slowly. And it's only if we speak up will this continue to change? And as I go around the country lecturing, I still see hands of the men rising before hands of the women. Uh, they say 80 to 90% of all op-ed letters to the editor are written by women. And I've written, I've gotten one letter published in the New York Times. I've written again saying, on some days I see no letters to the editor by women. Why is that? That letter wasn't published. <laughs> so notice the letters to the editor, the op-ed columns. And as women here mostly, and one good guy in the back, write those letters yourselves. Even though you, you say, what, what do I have to say? What do I? We're talking about bravery now. Write it and send it. And if more women write in, more women will get published. I have a friend who is the producer of um, a theater producer. And she tells me, she says, Linda, I try to push women, but you know, I guess about one third of the manuscripts I get are from women. The women don't ask as much as men, don't demand as much as men, and they don't get as much as men. So who has most influenced you in your life? There are many people who have had some influence on me. I, I would say when Gloria Steinem wrote the revolution, I think it's called the revolution from within. She asked a very interesting question, Aliyah. I won't put you on the spot and ask you that question, nor will I put others in this room on the spot, but here's the question. She said, what one word would you use to represent what your parents did not give you as a child? Hmm. So immediately what came to my mind, and I don't know what comes to yours, it would be interesting to hear the words thrown out afterwards, but for me the word was protection. And I thought a lot about that and growing up and remembered that dreams that I had as a child um, were of they were repetitive dreams. I don't know, how many of you have recurring dreams? Do you, okay, almost everyone in this room. My recurring dreams were of running. And the whole dream, I'd be running from bad people that were trying to hurt me. And I'd wake up in the morning, Aliyah, exhausted, <laughs> you know, from all this running. They never caught me, except in one dream, which is a very funny dream, but... Um, they never caught me, but um, the dream was running. And then on one sunny Tuesday in 2001, I was running for a whole day because I was here and the trade tower was hit. And the police came and evacuated us. So we were working on my art and we held hands running up Church Street right here. And I looked over my shoulder and said, why are they throwing furniture off the trade tower? And then I realized it wasn't furniture. And so that was a whole day of running and came back here. You know, the place was filled with smoke and shambles. I didn't, my apartment's four blocks away. I didn't live in my apartment for eight months. And this street, Reed Street, was closed from September 11, October, November, December, January, February 21st, this street opened. Hmm. Otherwise, there was um, National Guard in the street, and people were wearing masks. I didn't do sculpture for a year, 
And when I came back and did sculpture, the sculpture, which I thought was just going to be vertical, I was an abstract sculptor. Nothing was recognizable in my work. And I thought I would make abstract sculpture. But gradually, that abstract sculpture took on a form. And it looked like a figure. And then it looked like armor, like warriors, like um, people I didn't know. I didn't know where it was coming from. And I said, what am I doing? I'm a pacifist. You know, I jog around anthills. What am I doing here? And then my second influence, Wonder Woman, came to mind. And I, I said, yes, that's what I'm doing. It hit kind of a chord with me. And I felt that Wonder Woman, as she was created in 1941 to 47, where she converted the bad guys, she got them to, to be good, but she never killed. So I chose her as a role model. And then gradually it went to others. I don't know how many know Princess Mononoke from Japanese anime, or Kanon up in the corner there, goddess of mercy and protection. So protection became my theme, and that's what you see around the room, defenders and protectors. And they're, uh, they're incredible pieces for, uh, I know it would be the feeling that I had when we met and I, I was able to put on the body armor, but what would you say is the, what happens to people? You've gone, you know, you've visited so many universities, it's a traveling piece of art. What happens, is there a transformation when a person puts on the armor? Not everybody is transformed. Some people put on a sculpture, and imagine if you look over on that piece, there are Velcro shoulders, Velcro straps. It goes over the head, and you wear it. And you'll see mirrors all around because you could look in the mirror. One man put on a sculpture, I'll tell you which one, the one with W has a kind of big belly. And he looked in the mirror and he said, you know, I feel pregnant. I feel like an earth mother. And if you look at the monitor, you'll hear him. You could put on the headphones. He said, I always wanted to know what it felt like to be pregnant. Hmm. One woman put on the black sculpture and said, it feels like a musical instrument to me. I feel like playing. It just makes me want to tap. Then she put on this one, which other people thought was jewel-like and kind of festive. And she says, this one makes me feel like I'm holding my mother, who died in my arms two weeks ago. She said, I can't breathe. Please take this off me right away. So different people have different experiences. But they have an alteration. An alteration, because they say, you know, they say, neurologists say, psychologists say, if you take an empowering pose and you hold it for a couple of minutes, there's a chemical that goes off in your brain. We're moving toward that time. And that will be wonderful. I think that will be a very interesting time where we would recognize all kinds of gender presentations. Boys can cry, they could ask for directions, they could go to doctors. I mean, sky's the limit.